Um, I'm doing fine, thank you. Oh, they can't hear me on the screen again. On the stream again. Let's start from the beginning as if nothing happened. <laughs> Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to MBTV. I'm still your regular host on the channel. I'm still Captain Lust. I'm joined joined now though by Aaron Wentrowentz. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Always happy to be here. Well, I'm always happy, always happy to have you. Absolute pleasure as it is every time we speak. We are about to get into this game. Apis Europa vs Alliance of Destruction. It's our first quarter final, um, which is very exciting. It's knockout from now on. In fact, well, to be fair, technically it was knockout from last week on, right? Yes, because the um, what we were calling the losers matches, the uh, loser took fourth place and therefore was oh, third place rather, and therefore wasn't coming through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, the second place matches. Um, yes, you're right. So second place matches, that's a much better term. Yes. No, 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 because the loser's match is something else. The loser's match was the week two match where the loser of the first week... Oh, right, okay. So loser's... yes. Alright. This the, the second place. The loser's... There is, there is still a loser's match, unfortunately. Much as much as much as the dirt <laughs> displeases you. Um, but everyone's a winner when they play Warband. That is... that certainly is true. And perhaps the naming of the rounds should reflect that a bit more clearly. Um, Nevertheless, uh, we are back. We had to stream the quarterfinals. Uh, it is. Let's see, the matches have been knockout, but this is the knockout stage, though, I guess. This is, the, this is a slightly different thing when it's the quarterfinals. People know what quarterfinals are. Um, they have them in the World Cup and other real sports, so it's all very exciting. Are you saying this isn't a real sport? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's not a real sport, it's uh, an eSport. <laughs> How, how is eSport not a real sport? It's not. It's not one of the kicking, <laughs> the kicking, punching sports. It's uh, it's a. Uh, okay, you know. so you're saying because it's not physical. Yes, exactly. It's an eSport. It's a whole different thing. It's far better, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a real sport. Have you never heard of that opinion in eSports? They call them real sports. The other ones. Those ones. Um, no, I I think I've heard people complaining uh, about the distinction. Really, I think that's bizarre. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> it clearly is a distinction. Why not? Why not make one? That's very well, odd. Physical sports. And physical sports. Real sports. That's what I call them. <laughs> the punching, kicking ones. That's what I think of them as. Um. In any case, uh, tonight is all about esports because it's a triple stream on MBTV. We're moving into the second game of tonight, quarterfinal of the European Championship Series. So far, the tournament's been going spectacularly well, it's been very exciting. I think it's only going to continue that way. Apis Europa vs. Alliance of Destruction. A lot of people are very apprehensive about this game. They think Apis Europa will dominate AD. Are they right, do you think? It's hard to imagine anything else. I mean, Silver did do that great interview. He said they hope to surprise them, but you can't think. But there's really very little chance that anything else will happen other than an AE win. An AE win, yeah. But I mean, AD oh. perhaps could give us a good show here, get some great rounds, and um, and make make some good points about themselves and the scene and their ability. Oh yes, absolutely. Very much enjoyed their game last week, although um, there did seem to be a bit of confusion about the map, um, the flag mechanics. Yes, there was. It was an interesting game. Raw War Band they played last week versus Polish Eagles. <laughs> interesting. I mean, it's kind of understandable, I guess, from AD because they don't, they haven't been as active in NATO for such a long time. From Polish Eagles, I think there were some serious mistakes there that um, should not have been made. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that Silver had a good look at the stream last week as well. And I'm sure we won't be seeing any kind of flag errors or, or wrong foot's place in this match at all. Absolutely sure. Yes, um, I, I think they will have worked it out. <laughs> We're having suggestions <laughs> uh, in chat. The <laughs> volume's just posted. Have you seen that? Uh, Kai, no, Kai, I'm looking now. It's Kai, Kai, A, Tin, Last, and A, Run, One. We're on A TV. I'm a huge fan of A on on MBTV. I I think they're a great team. And I'm always always happy to stream them. It's always an absolute spectacle, a uh, fantastic warband. I I would say I'm quite a fan of AD as well since watching them last week. Oh yeah, oh, I love I've the team. I've very very much enjoyed a lot of their. Do you want to 
mentioned last week as well, but right, that's a good segue you brought up there because I've given their key players based on last week. I feel like Vasadnik and Garrett 10B played absolutely fantastically. Garrett 10B especially was just shooting and wrecking away all through different rounds. Um, yes, yeah, he got a lot of kills and um, was a good support. Yeah, certainly was, and and a good a good headshotter as well, which is always key in a. Um, <laughs> Always keen at a strong Russian side. I think you have to have those strong headshotting players. M and B comp, the uh, I would. It's not a channel. What is it? What would you call it? Um, Facebook page. Or? It's a Facebook page, I suppose it is. It's a Facebook page with a Twitter account, or is it a Twitter account with a Facebook page? <laughs> ah, it's the competitive competitive M B social media engine. Is what it is. It's some kind of engine. <laughs> That's what I think it is. Okay. Uh, and. They do have a lovely interview, as you referred to it earlier, beautifully with um, with Silver. And there's an also an interview on the channel. If you check out MBTV Replay as well, you can check out the interview with um, after the after the PE game as well. Him and Volshin, I believe, came out for that interview. And he said some really nice things about the international community and how happy he was about how, how it's thriving and everything. Uh, this, feel, this feels very PR right now, but um, it, it certainly made me very happy to see, to see him say that. Sorry, what were you about to say? Oh, it's, I think they're going live now. Are they going live now? Okay, let's do a let's do a map intro then. I think. Desolation Valley map intro, and we are into the first round of the game. Apisropi playing as the Saranid side against AD playing as the Nords over in the second spawn. Desolation Valley, a fine map. I was a little bit cold on it at first, I gotta say. It didn't win me over straight away, but um, I think I'm fully sold now. It's just a big slope with some ruins and a lot of open space. Absolutely great map. It's interesting with with that huge slope. It, it does um, make a make a difference. I've got the slope. Uh, we haven't ahead, any sorry. other map quite like this. So not quite so slopey. Yeah, and and, and just so you know, that's all, <laughs> that's all it is really. A slope with <laughs> stuff on it. <laughs> yes, I've got the slope <laughs> full like right on the screen right now, right in the middle. So if you do have any protractors to hand, you can measure the angle of that slope. And you can really work out just how slopey it is. If you if you happen to be uh, a GCSE math student. It's a bit variable, isn't it? Would you say? One in three? Maybe not that steep. One in three? Oh, or oh, a that ratio. Is a bit too. I work with degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say maybe sort of 25 degree slope. Maybe that's a bit over overstated, I'd God knows. Uh, flag yeah, is spawned in any that's... case. <laughs> Yeah, we're not worrying about how slopey it is. Yeah, it seems AD pushing away from the flag towards um, AE. A rolling their six cast setup, it must be said. And oh, first kill comes in there from AT. That's against the leader, that's the leader Silver, of whom we spoke so highly. Gluka goes down as well, and this six cast tactic from AE seems to be a little bit too much for AD right now. They're getting really spread out. Peter brings down Volshin and this is just a, absolutely brutal. Um, the spread and harass from from A right now has been more than AD seem to have looked like they've had anything uh, <laughs> anything to cope with it at all. Triple clear from Shema as well. Interesting to see Shema playing too. And well Dango Sadnik is the last kill. Only a scratch there on LaRue and the rest was just absolutely brutal. Now um, this is something that we that I've just spotted, and I should have spotted earlier. Shema Farash is playing, and there was a big lot of talk from AE mainly about um, <laughs> cav problems that they were having at the start of this tournament. Not enough cav, 
And then we saw Shema being like really active on the forums. Um, which was pretty weird. Why is it weird? Because he was supposed to be inactive in game. Um, and oh, they, right. that was part of their cab problems. Uh, now he's shown up. He's playing in this game. And he's just got a triple kill in the first round. Uh, so I think the other top teams and favourites for this tournament are going to be a little bit on their toes right now. They're concerned, perhaps, that uh, A have suddenly become a much, much bigger threat. Because not only is he a fantastic open map cab, he's possibly the best closed map cab the scene has ever seen. And I say that uh, quite, quite sincerely. I know a lot of people perhaps suggest that I'm being biased, but I honestly think when he's playing well, he's a very, very scary prospect indeed. When, I mean, he's always been very, very good player, but when you play with a team at such a high level, it's it's going to raise your game as well, isn't it? Naturally, so yeah. it's not surprising. That, that it would be said that he's the best in game. It's quite possible. And uh, the lines of destruction right now seem to have retreated into the ruins. They seem very concerned about uh, exploring the map, considering the horde of A cab, which are just completely dominating the space right now. That so. makes sense with all those cab around. Looks like they've got uh, Scar and M probably, probably going to be playing uh, the Dragoon kind of role. But they've able, been able to get uh, decent sound horses now as well. Bliv Singh and Spec. Um, I thought Bliv would be playing a little bit more in this game. Perhaps we'll see him coming later. Glad to see him playing in the tournament anyway. But I know Cleric Johnson's not present for this match. Deacon might not be around as well. Flag has spawned up in the forest kind of area. I think this is the best flag for, or I should say, the worst flag for six cav. So perhaps the best chance for for AD here. But Vulcan's already been caught out in this corner, being harassed right now. M's dismounted. Uh, these dragoons dismount and mounted death, as some know them, uh, <laughs> just cause absolute um, devastation. Playing as an infantry role when they do that. Peter bring down rage and. AD just looked like a rabbit in headlights right now. This is A's map, it must be said. Razor taking down Shawnee Veron. AD, I mean, they have raised the flag a little bit here. If they can stay alive, they do have a chance, but they're about to get very, very overwhelmed, I believe. And... <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Peter and Azambo picking up double kills there in quick succession. A just looking absolutely uh, horrifically devast devastating at the moment. And AD don't seem to have a chance. They have to take more cab. They've got to do something here because they're just getting butchered. Um. Yeah, they don't really have like many cav options, do they? They have got four people on cav, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, just, it's true. If they don't have the players that are able to play cav, it's always difficult. I I wonder actually. I I know you don't agree with me <laughs> about the. Um, effects of, of which map you play, but um, I still think it's possibly we're playing the wrong map first in this tournament. The wrong oh, map first? What does that mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, because the stronger teams we're playing the map they chose first and I would like to see it the other way around. I would like to what? see the uh, teams okay, who are I lower. See, see. It's only in this in this round that that's been an issue I suppose I would say. No, team team A has always been the highest seeded team. Oh really, is that true? Unless yeah. Unless something unusual happened in the group. Uh, okay, unless like the lower seed team went to the top and came back to the yeah. second okay I see. Um, and and yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen it the other way around. Right. I don't. I think all that's going to do is really extend matches, perhaps rather than change yeah, matches. <laughs> I don't have a problem with extending all band matches. That's fine. You can extend them. That's fine. But I don't think it's going to really have an effect on the result. Um, oh well, I think the results might be a little bit yes. closer. 
Well, closer in a, as much as we stream on the on the on the channel, but I don't know uh, if it would really make much of a difference because I mean, no matter I what. I think possibly it won't make a difference to who wins. Uh, you would hope actually that it wouldn't have that big an effect. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, if if it does have an effect, it certainly would be to end the map, end the match sooner. That certainly would. Um, yeah, makes sense and, and I would like to see um, the matches not ending quite so yeah, soon. That's, that's fair enough, I suppose. <clears throat> so the uh, flag spawned at the bottom of the slope again, and AD have to make their way. Is this not the first time it spawned there? Oh, did it not in the first round? I think it was the other or one. Maybe actually. it just didn't matter where it spawned. Oh, yeah. In the first round. Peter bring down Zoika, and once again AD kind of duking them out. They seem to have tried to trap LaRue here, but immediately in come a million bees swarming around them, all mounted to cause them problems, and surely they're on a big risk by going up on that step. LaRue manages to stay alive. Oh, he takes a big shot there on Shawnee Ron as well, fantastic. Shemmer getting stuck in, he's got himself a heavy horse, which uh, always makes him a basically unstoppable force. Been killed by Peter there. So. And th these rounds have just been devastating so far. Just so so one-sided. Um, team kills here. Two team kills actually from from AE this round. But that's all that they're going to give away. But do you think it's carelessness, or do you think they're just all going I think it's for the kills? Yes, I think it's so all going for kills. I think it's a feeding frenzy, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Much like when a whale falls to the bottom of the ocean, and a million parasites. Swarm upon it. It's pretty okay, much that's one right nature now. program I didn't see. You don't see that? Oh, bl <laughs> no. Blue Planet? But, I did, cl no, clearly didn't see that one. Blue Planet, fantastic. Creates a whole ecosystem just around a whale carcass, a lovely one. Uh, any case, we shall continue. Um, I think Frosker is leading. AD in the in the matches. Oh really? Is that the case? Yeah. I do apologize. I think uh, I mentioned it was silver. Yeah. Frosca, quite possible. Yeah. yeah. Silver, perhaps more of their uh, uh, administrative or symbolic lead. <laughs> A lot of teams have that kind of thing going on. And A just seem happy just to um, just sort of swarm around the middle of the map and pick up a heavy horse as well now even though he's sort of playing with Jagroon or originally he's going to be bumping people down and causing kinds of trouble is that two heavy horses now? Shemma surely still has his right? what did they swap? Oh. why though? oh they swapped, they swapped that's weird I wonder what the that's thing interesting thing there is. Oh, maybe if um, if you think the dragoon's going to go into the fights a bit more, that horse would be more fun. Yeah, possibly makes sense. Bump him down and dismount and hack him to pieces. Quite, poss quite possible. Uh, is their thinking there? And this has just been uh, a really tough game for for AD. So far, it's only three rounds in. It just feels <laughs> feels like it's a, a big struggle for them. Yeah, but going but going by the interview from um, Silver, I think they have a really good attitude, and they wouldn't have gone in expecting anything other than a really tough yeah, yeah. match. Yeah, it's totally understandable. Shimmer Frash picking up two kills early on the round. They're both from couch lances. I mean, he's just been absolutely devastating. I've said devastating a lot this set already. Uh, and it's hard not to because Shemmer's already on 7 and 0. Peter on 6 and 0. They're smashing shields. Surely Ron gets one kill back on LaRue. But Shemmer picking up another kill in this round. Going for the big 8 bomb. And AD slowly trudging their way across the map towards that flag. Do finally make it there, and they're going to raise it a little bit as well. We've got 50 seconds. 
They race it now into winning territory. Um, but the bees at Apostero Pie are going to be stomping them right now pretty soon. See the bee on that banner. Scar getting the final kill. And we're going to have a short Singing. 30 second break right now. And we'll see you after that. <laughs> Okay, so um, pretty brutal there in the first set, but it's got to be said, um, not an unexpected result, right? Oh uh, yeah, I I don't think anybody at all, and certainly nobody involved in the match expected much else. But the gold's gonna get reset now, and well, AD will have a chance to play as a sound inside, and perhaps I'll just think about turning this around. In terms of faction balance here, do you have any sort of opinion on that? No, I... <laughs> um, well, if, if you speak to some people, they like the jabs, so um, they'll say, yeah, but Nords maybe would have an advantage, but I think a lot of other people would say, well, Saranids would, would maybe have an advantage. But either way, it's clearly slight because there's a, a great difference of opinion there. Yeah, I don't think I don't, don't think it's going to swing it too much either way. Certainly not. Uh, we didn't really see the jabs being used too much. I don't think by the cav. Uh, a lot of time, if it's like a lot of cav playing, like what was it? Um, uh, I guess ten out of the sixteen people playing were cav, which is pretty high high proportion. So I guess uh, you would see probably a lot of Cav versus Cav jabbing, which players like Ferunia will like love to make use of. But not something we saw a lot of, I think, really in that uh, they seem focused on just swarming and really just honing in as a group, making devastating, more devastating <laughs> pass bys. I need to read the Thoros, the Thoros, I think, a little bit before the next stream. <laughs> That's some new words. And, uh, well, if Apis Europi move on from this match, which is looking likely that they will, they will face the winner of We Don't You and Castellans, I believe. Yes. Okay. And we will be seeing that match on Monday. Make sure you definitely tune in for that. The uh, Castellan We Don't You match. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, at 1945 PST on Monday. Yeah, yeah, that that will be a very interesting map. There's just been so many streams lately, and this this weekend's been absolutely full. <laughs> uh, right after this game um, at 20:30 BST, it's going to be the grand final of the Warband Turkey League as well. So definitely come and check that out. And, and you're streaming quite a few tomorrow as well. Yes, tomorrow we've got a uh, Polish Cup one in the. What is it? The it's at 17:30 BST. Then at 18:40 BST, we've got some very tight scheduling tomorrow. 18:40 BST, it's going to be freelancers versus IG, and then 19:30 BST or, or whenever freelancers IG finishes, we're going to go straight into Legend IR. So yeah, loads of games this weekend. Lots of yeah, well, to watch. Be, um, quite a lot going on with the ECL, the ECS, and the Polish. Yeah, true that. Yeah, ECL would love to, love to do some more ECL matches. Unfortunately, a lot of them sort of coming in, clashing with other things, but uh, I'm sure we'll, sure we'll catch some more ECL. So many people want to play weekend evenings, so it's um, difficult to yeah. do at all. Yeah. I think we should be getting back into the game. Just a minute. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Cyprus. 
problem there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think Aaron went hopefully is uh, okay. But um, <laughs> we, <laughs> yes. we, should, we had a slight production issue there on the stream as well, so do, do apologize about that. Some of the music went slightly, slightly wrong, but back in the game now and it just looks like AD. Straight into mayhem. It's like AD aggression. AD playing all cav, which is good. I think it's might, it might work for them. This I'd is the surprise they were promising. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been said in the past, how do you beat six cav on open map? And it's use more cav. And AD, Silver picks up a double kill there, bringing down Neathar. And here we have it. AD now, seven players against four of AE. comes Peter with a couch dance but it doesn't seem to get any kills and T brought down. I think this was a rush. They rush yeah. AD's base spawn as well. As I gets one kill back and they're gonna do their best here. They're three against six right now. Scar two is against Scar six. is brought down. I mean two against six there's players that you would want and against, uh, against the they, they do get finished off and A D holding their own here. Wow, well yes <laughs> Uh, they're going to go all cav again, it looks like. Um, are they going to rush again? Who knows? Uh, how are you going to react? Again, who knows? Very I, interesting. I don't Anybody think who isn't watching this is going to be so <laughs> sad. <laughs> Gentlemen in England still abed. <laughs> wow. That, that, was, that was an interesting sight. I'm so happy to have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> all cav. New meta. We currently have 14 out of 16 <laughs> players playing the game um, as Cav. Open maps. <laughs> it was a surprise. Um, Are they going to rush in? Whether, it looks, looks like yeah. they're thinking of thinking well, they, about it. They're not going to take AE by surprise this time. They're not going to take them by surprise, but they have managed to get themselves some gold, at least. Uh, it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference, but Silver picks up three kills there, so I think picking up a couple as well. And the thing is, if AD can hold this, I mean, to sort of a, a 2 6 or, or even a 3 3 5, if they did really well, then they've got a great chance of giving AD a, a good run for their money in the next map. So, a brilliant start to the set, and not one a lot of people would have predicted. Absolutely fantastic. AD now seem to be patrolling. They're going to be holding the high ground and just running down the slope towards. Uh, a as soon as you get the chance. Disconnect there from A as well, and that's n not what A, a need right now after the first round. A moving to do some, some jab harassment there. I think we are going to be seeing A make a bit more use of the Nordic jab cav. Something we didn't see AD really doing too much of at all. Got to be careful though, Azan. Flags more to the bottom of the slope. AD gonna start moving right now. Charging towards these uh Nordic Cav. I mean, the problem here for AD is that their horses are slower than the AEs, and that is always gonna cause them a problem. AD gonna do their best to just harass them with jabs, weaken their horses and try and dismount them, I think. AD closing in on the on the archer. They bring down Razor straight away. That's a that's a big very important kill there. And with Nears' case as well, there's no archers left here for AE. And they're fighting, they're fighting now six against eight, cav on cav. M dismounted, and they can ignore him now, effectively. You know, just find another horse, actually. Silver's left left on the ground, so uh, a <laughs> bit of a dodgy <laughs> trade-off there. Brilliant couch chance there from Shawnee Ron, going to bring down 80 off his horse. Scar gets one kill back against Rage, though. The A cab pile in, Azan is brought down. T goes down, and AD. I think they'll take the second round, looks like it. Seven, seven cav against the three, four remaining of A. He just starts weaving it up, and AD are looking low on health. They must be careful at this point. Silver's dismounted at the flag. He's going to start racing it as well, and that's going to give them an advantage as well. It's going to force AE to dismount eventually. Because this could go on, this could go on to, the, to the end of the round, and AE has to start thinking about what to do here. Peter brings down for Zad Zadnik, but one of them's going to dismount now. Peter is dismounted. Nice work there from Zloika. 
Low health left as well. Ooh, a team kill there from, oh, from Zoy Arthas. But AD still with the advantage though. Shimmer brings down Zoy Arthas. Three against three, and now AD with the better health. But 20 seconds left. If AD can stay alive on this flag, the flags which treated them so so badly in the last set, if they can. Low health though. Oh, the double kill there from Scar. Oh, massive play oh. there from Scar at the end. That's going to even up. <laughs> AD, I think. Oh, they missed a good, good chance there. It was, for, yeah. We for, felt it was close enough they could have made it. Absolutely. They absolutely could have done. Kill. If they just played a bit more defensive, a bit more turtly on that flag. Now, are AD going to go back to a, a, an early push? It looks like it. It looks like they are. And you can see that they're moving. It's almost in formation on the map right now. They're going to charge right in. Razor and LaRue under a lot of pressure. Razor Shield gets caught straight away. Surely everyone caught up in this melee though. Silver going to dismount. They're going to go for a Dragoon approach right now. And Silver going to start engaging them. Let's get taken down though. And oh, it's not going too well for AD this time. The KVE proving too much. And this has not played out too well. Scar picks up the double kill. And AD, I think they're going to rue the missed chance that they had in the previous round. Zorathas pulls back a double kill. Peter picks up a double as well. Oh, and a triple kill there from Peter. Devastating with those javelins. Shemaf rushes double kill. Finally coming up there as well. It was <laughs> it was a little bit behind there <laughs> because there were so many kills and so many double kills at once. But it did get it up on the screen eventually. And if AD, if AD could have just clinched that that round before, they'd have been in such a better position. It's not over yet though. The, the gold is not out of control here for Apostrophe by at all. AD gonna clump up once again. It looks like. Trying to catch out A Cav unawares. Uh, Peter loves to play with his loves to play with his Corsair. Nord Nordic Cav do have the best riding skill, which means that they're the fastest Cav in the game. And the Corsair was the fastest horse in the game. So a Nordic Corsair, as you can deduce, is the uh, fastest fastest way you can move around in this game. Scar dismounted early on. Zoys loses horse as well, and Scar gonna get swamped right now, brought down by Shawnee Rom with the couch lines. First blood goes to AD in this round. Peter's still harassing. Zoik has been dismounted. But you only had a saddle horse anyway. AD grouped up in this corner and they are... They brought something to this match, which is, that, which is so brilliant. They brought a threat. And they are... They've drawn blood from the, the AE swarm. Peter's still harassing. Team moves into harass as well. I don't think they've gotten too many javelin hits <coughs> off though. Most of them seem to have landed in shields. No, AD are very far away from the AE archers. I don't know if that's by design. Yeah, I would suspect it is, because you don't want to be too close to the ruin <laughs> racer. <laughs> Not if you can help it. The ruin moving in for near Thar after he had, a, had that disconnect. Unfortunately, disconnect. And the flag does spawn now. Between the rocks. Razor and the room moving down. This could be a chance for AD to catch them in, in transit. They don't seem to want to move out of their area. They are going to start going now. They're moving in a line, as you can see clearly on the minimap. Uh, going to rush around now and try and catch the, the AE cav. In come the, in come, in come the AE archer, sorry. In come the AE cav to support, though. It's a big mess. First kill comes in for Zadnik. Oh, a team kill, though, there from... Shawnee Veron and now LaRue, Razor, Peter picking up kills. Once again, falling in the favour of Apostrip, by it looks like. And they should be able to see out this round. AD doing what they can, but they are overwhelmed now. I think they missed their chance to get the second round of this, of this set. And we are going to see it end 7 1 for Apostrip. We're going to have a short half minute break then, and we'll see you on the other side. Fireworks in the second set, as well as AD decides to go all cav, and it's something which has always 
always been sort of a meme in the scene, a sort of, of the thing that you do when there's nothing else to do. You go all cav, and you try your luck. But AD really making it work there. What did you think, Aaron? Were you impressed? Yeah. I mean, I was I was thrilled to see them do it. It's been said that AD didn't have strong cav. Um, and, and to make it work the first time taking a U by surprise like that and nearly making it work on the second round so well. close I know. That, yeah that was um that was very good to see um but the for the rest of it with the team kills i mean presumably an awful lot of them are not used to playing cab and and not used to playing cab together and it Presumably, I don't play Cav at all, but <laughs> presumably it's very difficult to <laughs> dash around like that in a closed space when you're all trying to kill the same person. So. Yeah, it's totally understandable. Uh, probably that needs a bit more practice. I mean, I wonder how much they did practice, actually. It's a good point you raise. But they, if, I mean, if they presumably they knew they were going to do it. I wonder, I wonder why they felt like it wouldn't work as Nords, though. That's the interesting thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess Cav versus Cav Sarans do have a pretty good advantage uh, with all that extra maneuverability, but that's still an in interesting. Um, but they chose to spring it in the second set. And the game's not over yet. And now we're on AD's, or we will be on AD's map. I mean, I kind of don't think there are any maps that aren't really. AE's maps. They, that is true. It's, it's not that they have a weakness in any area. So. No, and especially uh, Sandy Bush. I, I know that they've, they're big fans of the, of the map, actually. It's a map that's been in the scene for a long time. Made by yours truly. <laughs> I have suggested that it should, you know, it's perhaps time to move on. A number of times. Um, I think... But it's, um, it's a very loved and, um, you know, I'm very proud and, and flattered. With the pick ban system, it's been banned as much as it's been picked. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I think because it's so much. closed, I think that, that that's, the, that's the reason. It's not because people don't love it, it's just a tactical banning. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to close map, you don't want Sandy Bush. Yes, yeah. I'm not. Um. But yeah, it's... Uh, one of the most picked maps. Yeah. Quite possibly is. I just checked, it is. It's Sandy Bush and Filled by the River. So perhaps oh, really? the most closed and the most open <laughs> map. Yeah, <it's>, it makes <laughs> sense. Um, so, I don't know. We're not going to see six cav on this map. Plenty of imp, presumably. Uh, yeah, I would have thought so. Um, we have some teams taking two cav though on it, quite a lot recently. Uh, I think that's what AD chose to play when they played it in their previous time. I think it was against PE actually they, that we saw them play it, uh, rolling with two cav. I believe it was against PE. We've seen quite a bit of AD. We saw them in the qualifiers as well, and it must be mentioned that. Um, I mean, what AD have achieved already is quite fantastic. They come back to the scene after like four years of inactivity. They absolutely stomped the qualifiers, and they are the only team um, who came through the qualifiers to make it through to the quarterfinals. That's already a brilliant achievement in itself. Yeah. Beating the seed, proving it wrong. <laughs> and bringing a brilliant surprise to this match. Oh yeah. They, sh they shall go down in the annals of time as the team which uh, <laughs> beat 6 cab with all cab. <laughs> 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 Lovely stuff. <laughs> Our chat has mentioned here uh, about an 8 cav first rush round on Sandy Bush. And I I must say, I do agree, it is viable. It is a viable tactic. It's very, uh... Are we, not, are we live? We're not, are we? I don't think so. No, we're not. Okay. It is a viable tactic. If, if you get, if you spawn really fast against a team which is taking a little bit of time to spawn, 
you can swamp them. Um, you can get your cav there, uh, like as they're spawning, and really mess them up. It has to be the first round though, when when uh, teams are still picking gear. And I, f I feel like against a team like AA, might not be as effective. Um, I wouldn't care to try it. No, probably not. No, I think the best thing is probably to trust in their infantry um, and their archers yeah. as well. Um, I think the good, they've got two um, excellent archers, as we saw last. Volshin and Garrett Tenby, yeah. Yeah. Especially, especially Garrett Tenby. It's a name I love to say. I'll say it. I'll say it all day. <laughs> it's Garrett Tenby. Um, Tenby, very nice seaside town. <laughs> Tenby, is it? <laughs> Pembrokeshire. Yeah. Pembrokeshire. Oh god. It's the Welsh tourist <laughs> board again. Thanks for that. Oh well, if um, if you can get there, it's one of the most wonderful places on God's earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's ironic, oh so no, I haven't been watching, I don't know. I haven't been watching what? Whether we're starting or not. Uh, I think it's <laughs> not live now. It's ironic that you're so... Uh, Pro Wales, and yet you've completely abandoned the accent. It seems to be very a very pick and choose. <laughs> it's not a choice I make. Um. <laughs> of course, it's not. I can understand why it would be embarrassing to speak in England with a Welsh accent. <laughs> I know the kind of comments you get. Um, I'm very proud of being Welsh, but I don't have. I mean, even when I'm home, I don't have a Welsh accent because Pembrokeshire's always been very English, so it's more a Pembrokeshire accent. There you go. I'll let you off. <laughs> but will the but will the Welsh people let you off? I do wonder. Uh, I believe we're going live now, so we're gonna run that we're gonna run that brand new Sandy Bush map intro. Enjoy. Okay, and we get to the game. It is now the third set. AD are playing as the standard side in the first spawn. Apis Europa starting off as the Swadians, leading 7-1. Shimaf Farash and Peter playing as Cav. Sean Evron and Frosky are playing as Cav for AD. Two Cav apiece for both sides. Quite a sensible choice. Interesting that Garrett Tembi is the lone archer here for Alliance of Destruction. They've chosen to put, play Volshan as an infantryman. Well, she's known as a fantastic ranger. Praise is sung by Watley on many an occasion. And, well, he's beaten A once before as nameless. That's an achievement not too many can um, list on their, yeah. on their scout belt. Um, what do you think of that choice, then? Because with if you're playing against crossbows... You, you get more shots off with archers. Crossbows have to reload. That's true. So, and of course, you don't get crossfire with just one. Uh, I, to be honest, I think without being too concerned about the uh, the the opposition, I just think like the fact that they have those two archers playing so well. I think you just have to use them. You have to get them there, get them shooting into melee. That's going to make the difference, because I just feel like the infantry for A is just stronger, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe they have Deacon and Cleric missing, which is going to make a difference. But look at their inf lineup. It's M, Azan, Scar, and Razor. So basically not too shabby, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and AE got the flag. Graveyard, they're already on it. Um, yeah, and of course, um, giving us that wonderful video of the 3v3. Oh, it's a beautiful video. Definitely go and watch yeah. that. Fight breaking out real time right now, though, as 
Uh, AD charging into the graveyard, getting the first heal here on Peter as well. Shemo takes a big hit as well, and uh, he seems to be under a lot of pressure right now. Goes down to Sean Veron with a double kill, crushing up his zero prize. Cavalry and Giga triple kill now, bringing down Razor as well. Sean Veron unstoppable, the former KHR god. Now comes into Harass LaRue. He wants more kills, he wants more AE blood. And it's just two AE players left. AD have dominated them in this graveyard. Azam being harassed at the top. Silver, Silver is the one to finish him off. The Rue, the last reigning player, smashes one shield. Kills one horse, takes down Shawnee Veron. That's important as well, the because they don't want him to stack AD. up. AD are raising the flag, and LaRue is just backing off, going to have to duke it out. <laughs> and LaRue's done a good job looting this axe, that's going to cause big, big trouble here for, uh, for AD. Smashing shields and forcing him to buy them again. Brings down Silver as well, and LaRue with a massive... Last round of sad. Oh, the, the oh. kick slash as well. I mean, the flag's gone up as well. It's the end of the round, I believe. Eventually, the Rudolph's go down. But a brilliant last stand there. And that's going well, to make AD's victory much, much less sweet and much, much less fruitful. As that will be a lot less gold advantage that they take from that. A little bit reckless there from AD, but a fantastic win nonetheless. And showing that they're capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with AE on this closed map. It's the comeback on. They stacked up on armor pretty well, actually. The infantry getting this leathery type armor as well, which is light and, you know, armory armor, which is always good. AD still has managed to loot himself a long pike as well, and that's always tasty. Could have given it to a cav. A lot of cav like to play with the long pike. They just have great reach and devastating damage, especially on closed maps. You know, something that a player like Trebron will always take. I wonder if Shema took it actually. I will little look. A hey, seems to be yeah, he just has has had a, a long old pike drop there. It seems to be his preference. For you close map cab, looking for tips. Some of the best in the scene. <coughs> Gonna be going for the long old pike. A lot of all pikes for the infantry as well, in fact all of them going for all pikes. Focusing on dealing with that cab because well, it makes makes sense after what Sean Ivron did last round. That triple kill was just huge. Both of the cab brought down. And surely Veron, surely will earn some Bendetto points from this match after that display. What do you think? Um, a Bendetto points, not old hat now. We've got Scar points. Scar points, maybe we'll get some of those as well. <laughs> Making a very strong point for, for some Scar points there. <laughs> Actually, um, they... I, I really wish they would put figures on. I know, I like the numbers. I'm not sure. Yeah, I want the numbers. And then we could have a combination as well. Ooh. <laughs> BP plus, plus SP. <laughs> yes. The SP. <laughs> <laughs> that means something. What does that mean? No, no. I've not as far as I know, anyway. <laughs> not um, that, that's so no, no meaning intended, and you can't hold <laughs> me to it. <laughs> <laughs> so the flag spawns. Under the feet of AD. And they're holding out AE here as well because they know that they can't give AE these um, high positions. Or an early kill, early shot, sorry, from Nia. But they've, they've done a good job of containing AE right now. M trying to force his way up these stairs, but not going to do it with an all pike. Yeah, he brings out his sword so he can start pushing Volsh and start harassing up. But uh, they're happy just to let LaRue shoot from low ground right now. And AD starting to have to lean back a little bit. Oof. Garrett Tenby playing with fire. Yes. They've done a good job of keeping uh, A busy. They haven't been raising the flag in the meantime, though, must be mentioned. Tenby goes down to an early headshot from Neathar near, near there. And, well, this is a very, very closely fought, intense fight. Walsh is doing what he can against multiple opponents, but holding up really well on these stairs. Eventually, he's brought down, and AD driving back. They're not out of it yet. M with the double kill, though, and he's playing fantastic. But it's brought down by Silver. Right now, A with an advantage, but Gluka gets the double kill. Gluka, a veteran of multiple. Russian teams, including Warhammer. Possibly VRNG, I want to say, but I'm not sure. Double kill here from LaRue, though. He's find, found some space. It's just Luca left. Getting kicked, getting harassed. And AE bring it to match point. Great round from AD, but not quite enough. Yeah, very nice. Um, you, you felt it could have gone the other way. Certainly could have. Lovely, I mean, one lovely headshot by Nia. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, that really shifted it. Plus... Um, eventually, LaRue found space to shoot from the stairs. 
and as soon as he's unchallenged in any situation and able to shoot, it's going to make a difference, most likely. Yeah. But I mean, AD did a great job, really great job of, of holding AE back there and really slowing them down. If they'd have turtled there, and we've seen it happen a million times in matches, if you turtle on that flag, um, the team coming from AE's spawn side will get up on the high ground and they will just dominate the fight. So, um, well recognized from AD there to avoid avoid that. They're happy to play on the low road again, which is interesting because they know the flag won't spawn there. Yeah, we're sure about that, aren't we? <laughs> We've got the flag mechanics all sorted out. Yeah, why? What do you mean? Was there, has there been some problems with that? No, no, I oh, mean, okay. oh, um, AD. Oh, are AD sure of it? Yeah. Uh, I think um, they... Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm maybe perhaps they're not sh they're not clear on the uh, non-repeat flags, or maybe they haven't considered it, or they've forgotten it. It's possible. It's a it's a new mechanic brought in. Yeah. To shift things on up. the other hand, you know, if you're gonna stay, um, makes sense to stay out of the way of the archers. Yeah, it's not a bad spot to to camp anyway. Uh, flag was spawned in 30 seconds. A holding up uh, back towards their spawn. He starts to push towards near where ADR. Perhaps they've forgotten the flags as well because. Soika <laughs> 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 accidentally typing in. Uh... Typing in chat. Flag spawns. Unsurprisingly, not in the low road. Um, spawns up in the graveyard. Shots coming in from LaRue. Not able to get too much damage done. And well, AE don't really have this. In fact, AD are going to move in there. Pretty much unchallenged from, a from AE. Get straight into that graveyard and... I wonder if AE could have got there a little bit earlier. LaRue still has the high ground, but Vulture's going to keep him busy immediately. And not a great spot for AE at all, actually. Scar now caught up on the stairs. Uh, with some very unfriendly fellows taken down straight away in that round. Shawnee Ron does is brought down though by Razor. That's a huge kill. Razor with a double kill now, bringing down Frosca as well. And no cav remain for AD. Immediately two spears brought out when they realize there's no cav left for them. Uh, they were to be dealing with the likes of Peter and Shemafarash. In comes Shema now. And you feel he's going to get something done there. You feel he's going to cause problems now. A driving forward to their victory in this match. And they do look threatening. And then does get a double kill. As Lord Arthas is brought down. It's only Silver remaining. He's a lovely chap. He's put a great AD side together with help his teammates. Oh, he managed to get. <laughs> he knocked LaRue to his death and got a headshot for it. It's a very rare occurrence there. If you knock someone off and they fall to their death, you do get the headshot. That's going to be the end of the match, though. Um. Very well done to Apostero Pi. Very well done to AD for putting on a, a great show. Absolutely some brilliant. Very exciting from rounds. AD. If some of them had swung the other way, it would have been. Could have perhaps changed it. In any case, that's going to be the end of the end of the match. Don't go anywhere though. We're going to run a short break. to the post game now. Sorry for some slight production confusion there. Very well done to, to Apostero Pi. A great game. Even if the score shows it as one-sided, it was a, a great, great watch. Great fun to watch, yeah. And um, I certainly don't think AD can... They don't, don't have any reason to be ashamed of their performance there at all. No, nope, they'll go out with their head held high, I would think.
but ADR now. Heads high, heads held high or not, they are now out of the tournament. <laughs> Apis Europa move on to the semi-finals, as predicted by everyone. Coming up in 30 minutes, we are going to have the grand final of the Warbad Turkish League, the second season of that, or the second season of the Gamers House, Gamers House Warbad Turkish League. But definitely do come and check that out. That will be starting in yeah, just 30 minutes or so. I think we're going to try and get a little bit of an interview set up here, but it will have to be a very, very short and sweet one. I'm sure we can bring in a couple of eight players if they're around. Any closing thoughts on the match, Aaron? Um, only that it was... Uh, I hadn't expected AD to be able to do anything on the open map, and that was just such fun to, to watch them with their uh, all-cav tactic. It was brilliant. And um, we'll see if we can bring in some A players here. Yeah, that's one I'm going to be watching over on the uh, MBTV replay. Yes, well pointed out. Would you like to quickly tell the viewers about the sponsors and quickly about the tournament while we're getting the interviews, interviews in? Yeah, well for this tournament we are very fortunate. It's the first time um, Random Blade is sponsored by Razor. And um, they will be, actually for the final, um, they will be tweeting the final and um, doing a raffle. Yeah, make sure you're around for the final, not to mention all the other matches before then, but particularly for the final. Um, and they have prizes for the winning team. Um, we also have um, servers supplied by and prize servers supplied by um, gameservers.com and Mark Mods. Um, that's brilliant of them to do that for us. And we, we also have servers supplied by Wolfpack. Wolfpack always supply servers for the tournaments. They're very good. And um, Simurai are giving us the other two French servers. So we've, we've had a lot of help with the servers this time around. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, I want to quickly, uh, we're going to bring in Levanfar just for a quick five, ten minute interview there before I start getting ready for the next game, which is going to happen in 30 minutes. Uh, so we'll have Blue Vandervar coming in. Just a second, while we just get ready for him. So do tweet in your questions. At Captain Lost or at Eric Went. Get your questions ready for A Blue Vandervar. He did sit on the bench, but I'm sure he can give us a little bit of insight about what's going on with A overall. Um, Thank you, was in TS. It's, it's always lovely to speak to him as well. <laughs> he's a very nice guy. And he's going to be joining me for the cast of the next game, which is going to be uh, exciting. 